Hey guys, this is Mark from Adventure Time Outdoors and uh, with summer fishing coming to an end and uh, the fall season starting to get a little tough for us uh, shoreline fishermen uh, I decided that uh, today I was going to go through my ice fishing equipment and um, make sure all my lines are okay, my hooks are still sharp and so and whatnot but uh, I wanted to share a few things with you guys from last year about uh, you know the gear that I carry and uh, you know how I use it and uh, if it's effective or not, and I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Uh, when you start getting into talk about gear, everyone seems to uh, freak out a little bit about uh, what brand you like to use and what size hooks and who makes it and uh, whatever. And uh, I don't really buy into the whole media thing about it because uh, with this very simple and uh, say primitive gear, I've had uh, 100 plus days uh, on the ice uh, with fish and with uh, no problems and uh, you know uh, we caught big fish, small fish, uh, you know I've been told you can't catch crappie in these things and well I've proved that wrong too I mean you just have to understand how crappie eat um, and how they hunt but uh, I've got some pictures for you guys that I'll be posting uh, along in this and uh, I'll show you a few things and how it works but uh, first I'd just like to go through a few things that I have here So right here we have my uh, my Rapala ice auger. It's uh, an, an eight inch. It's got the bit down here. It's an eight inch. Um, as far as uh, how Rapalas go, uh, or Rapellas, or however you like to say it, um, it does tear through the ice like 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 uh, like a laser beam. I mean, it goes through it really quick, really easy. Uh, last season we were popping holes. Uh, in the three, three and a half feet of ice and uh, a couple of times I even bottomed out and I couldn't even make it through the ice with this thing and I was going through in probably around nine seconds. So, I mean, it was really, uh, it, it was great, it was cutting the ice real quick. Um, the one thing I did have a problem with is the recoiler on my second time out broke. So, uh, I had to contact um, the manufacturer and uh, they actually sent me an Eskimo one because this auger is basically the exact same thing as an Eskimo auger. Uh, so the rel reliabilities, I mean, again, we're talking about gear here. There's some people that are Eskimo uh, freaks and some people say Jiffy and Strike Master and so on and so on. But uh, the price was right. I bought it and it served me well ever since I fixed the problem. Uh, the problem was, though, on the inside, there is a small washer that attaches to the handle on the inside. And um, the washer is, to, I guess, to protect it from the plastic. And it was actually the washer that cut my line. And when the line released, it uh, spun back the spring and broke it. So, um, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. But uh, she's worked good ever since. So I'm happy with that. So I also carry uh, my minnow bucket because we tend to fish with uh, minnows while we're out. Um, pick them up at a local place. The guy charges us three bucks for a dozen. And... Uh, and the few spots that we have, we tend to go through them quite quick, so uh, sometimes it can be a little expensive. But um, we also, I also picked up these at uh, Canadian Tire. There's these little uh, ice gripper thingies. I don't know what you call them, but uh, they can be essential from time to time. I do carry two scoops. Uh, this one I've attached a wooden dowel to it, just so uh, while I'm scooping up the hooks, I don't have to, the holes. I don't have to keep bending over all the time. And I attached a, a lanyard to it just so. Uh, when my son's doing it, he doesn't drop it down the hall, which has happened. So, that's that. Uh, also, something else you may be wondering about is this pot. Uh, in this pot, this pot is like my most important gear that I carry. Uh, I'm not catching fish with it, but um, this also, uh, this is what I bring on the ice with me to uh, light a fire in. Uh, I keep uh, this plastic bin in here. I keep... Uh, a bunch of wood inside and when we do go out on the ice I take this pot I stick it on two pieces of wood I fill it up with wood we light it on fire and then uh, while we're out we cook uh, make our coffee in this uh, I have a little um, coffee pot that a percolator that percolates coffee uh, I've got a frying pan that I bring with me also when we cook steaks or stew or whatever it is we want to do uh, while we're on the ice and uh, it also keeps us quite warm. This little tiny pot here, I guess it's maybe about uh, 10 inches or a foot across. Uh, you load this thing full of hardwood. We usually have uh, birch or leftover broken pallets and things like this. And uh, it keeps us warm. It keeps us real warm.
So I'll show you a quick demonstration of how my lines work. So here's the, the hook and the weight. We drop this down and your tip up will land like this. Now at any point when a fish comes by and starts to nibble on your, on your line, you'll detect the smallest, I mean the smallest nibbles that you'll find. Now we basically have these set up pretty close to center, so yes it is bottom heavy, but you got your weight there. So anytime you get a little nibble, like I mean tiny, 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 just a little tiny little tap, you'll see your, you'll see your line wiggling. Now when you do get a, catch a big fish, or a cat, get a big fish on your line, the fish will hit it hard, it'll come down like this, and that's letting you know you have a fish, or even a small fish will, will do that from time to time when it decides to run. But when it hits here, it sets the hook. It doesn't go any farther. And you're basically uh, putting this into the ground. Uh, when you drill your hole, all the slush that comes up, you stick this in there and you pack it around the snow. And then within uh, about five minutes or so, it gets frozen pretty solid. So it doesn't really matter how, how big the fish is. He's going to hit it. He's going to try to run. And he's only going to go so far. Then after that, it's up to you to play him to come up the hole. Come up the hole. Um, and uh, you can take a look at this next uh, video coming up and you'll see uh, uh, my brother actually pulling in a really nice sized pike with one of these. He's going to eat you. He's going to nibble you a little bit. That's a fucking pike. That's a pike. Fuck it. Now, typically in our area, uh, I'm allowed to fish with 10 lines in winter time. Um, but I usually don't put down 10 lines at these. I usually put nine. And what I'll do is I'll drill about 30 or 35 or 40 holes, and I'll set up my uh, my line of my lines along a break point, and we'll either follow the break point along the side of it, or we'll go from up to down uh, in the spot where we like to fish, following a weed line. And um, and what I'll do is after is I'll take uh, a jigging rod and uh, out of my nine lines that are running there, I'll take my jigging rod and start uh, jigging all the holes and seeing how many, uh, seeing what I can catch in each spot. Now, here's the tackle I tend to bring with me. Uh, truth be told, there's uh, only a few things in here that I actually use. Everything else just kind of, uh, I got caught up in the buying tackle for ice fishing gig and uh, I realized that there's only a few things in here that I really like using, and there's one that I absolutely love. So I'll get to the two that I that I kind of like to use, and the one that I use almost most often. The one I use most often is this guy here. I call him Mr. Pinky. He's an extremely beat up, and uh, doesn't look so great anymore. But I'll show you the color he's actually supposed to be. This is Mr. Pinky. He's kind of tiny. I'll see if I can get in there a little bit. And this is a, a newer, a newer body that I'm going to be putting onto him this year. But uh, this one guy, one guy has caught somewhere close to 100, 150 perch. He, uh, he's got this little tail that likes to likes to vibrate and wiggle. And I'll uh, put up a video on how I like to uh, fish this little guy. But um, You'll drop them straight down, and I just shake the rod tip, and it'll it'll just shake the tail like this in the water. Got him, well. Reel in. I, I reel in. Yeah. I reel you reel in. in. You reel in. Make sure he's still there. You reel in. Careful the hole. Whoa, that's a good one. Yeah. Let me see. Is that another good one? Are we keeping that one? Yeah. Yeah? Now, as for the clothes that I did wear, uh, I did uh, ruin um, a nice snowsuit I had uh, a bunch of years back from... Uh, you know, getting coming too close to a pot belly stove and putting a burn mark in it, and uh, anyway, they ended up ripping on me and they got ruined. It was time to buy a new one. Didn't have any money to buy something fancy or expensive, so I went to, uh, to uh, Walmart 
and I found these uh, packs to replace the ones that I had lost. Um, I have to say that I think they're made by Remington or something. Let me take a look here. Yeah, they're Remington. Um, they're snow camouflage. Probably not the best thing to have it on the ice. Uh, you should definitely wear something that's um, in contrast, to, you know, in contrast to the to the snow. Uh, something dark or something bright orange would be good. Um, at the time, money was short for me, so I ended up buying uh, these guys uh, and uh, and the coat to go with it. Uh, the next year, I have to say that the the quality of them is actually okay uh, for the price that you're paying. Uh, I've been outside in minus 30 degrees, minus 32, 34 with the wind chill, and um, spent eight hours outside in the snow. And that's in severe cold. I mean, that's really cold. If you take a glass of water and you throw it up in the air, it freezes before it touches the ground. So uh, that's in cold weather. And these things took it no problem. Uh, they kept me dry. They kept me uh, warm. And uh, I have no pinholes or anything from the fire, uh, you know, fire sparking onto it or anything like that. Um, the, only com the only thing I would say is... Uh, if I was going to go and buy these again, I would buy the summer camouflage ones where you're looking at, you know, green and browns. So uh, if I ever got into trouble on the ice and I happened to be alone, which is a no-no, uh, but if it ever happened, uh, me screaming for help wearing these out on the ice would make it much more difficult for somebody to come and help me uh, than if I was wearing a, a black or a bright orange or something like that. So that's about it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found the information uh, useful. And um, if you want, you can check out one of my other videos. It's called Another Day at the Fishing Hole. And you can see uh, uh, the tip-ups in action of, uh, of taking really small taps. And you'll see the, uh, the small, small, tiny perch we pull up. And uh, anyway, um, if you're interested, uh, check out that video. Uh, besides that, guys, uh, you know, be safe out there this year. I know it's still early. It hasn't really froze up yet, but uh, it's coming. So uh, get out there. Enjoy it with your friends, your family, your kids. Just be safe, make smart decisions, and uh, have a good time. So get out and explore, guys, and I'll see you on the ice. Say bye to the fishy. Bye, fishy. Okay, bye, bye, fishy. Stick him in there. And he's gone.